The Monroes lived in Paris on two separate occasions, the first of which was during James Monroe's tenure as ambassador to France from 1794 to 1797. The second time was when Monroe was the minister to France, Spain, and England during the Jefferson administration, 1803 to 1807. In 1794, when Monroe was first sent abroad, the diplomatic relationship between France and the United States was extremely fragile. As the French Revolution progressed and the United States continued to deny military support, ties between the two nations became increasingly hostile and George Washington sent James Monroe to France in the hopes that he might restore peace. During their first stay in Paris, the Monroes purchased a house on the Rue de Clichy called Folie de la Bousière, as well as a series of fashionable furniture to fill its rooms. Mr. Monroe and his beautiful wife, referred to by the French as La Belle Américaine, or the Beautiful American, became fixtures in the French social world. Monroe, a revered hero of the American Revolution, was a popular host in French high society and an invitation to their home was coveted by many European aristocrats. In this room, you can see the pieces from the set of furniture that the Monroes bought for the Foley and then brought back to America upon their return. As you can see, these pieces are made of mahogany with brass details and marble tops. This piece is called a console dessert. Mrs. Monroe would have used it as a serving table in the dining room or perhaps in a parlor. On the other side of the room, we have a commode, which is a chest of drawers that held linens, serving utensils, and silver. This small round tea table is called a bouillot table. It has pull-out shelves intended to hold candlesticks or teacups, and drawers for gaming pieces or tea accoutrements. Each of these pieces of furniture graced the rooms of the Folie de la Bousière. One of the unusual aspects of Monroe's time in France was that he brought his entire family with him, even though his wife was not healthy and their daughters were still very young. As a result, both of the Monroe children were greatly influenced by their upbringing in Paris. Over here you can see an Irish lap harp purchased by Monroe for his daughter Eliza while she attended boarding school in France. Monroe hoped his daughter would become a skilled harpist. Nearby is a portrait of Hortense de Beauharnais, the daughter of Josephine and stepdaughter to Napoleon. Hortense attended the same boarding school as Eliza Monroe, where the two became best friends. In honor of her dear friend, Eliza Monroe would later name her own daughter Hortensia, and made Hortense the child's godmother. Hortense, who eventually became the Queen of Holland, sent this portrait of herself to her namesake many years later. Mrs. Monroe was affected by her time in France, too, and would always look upon her time there as some of the happiest days of her life. Here you can see Elizabeth Monroe's tea box, which she used when entertaining at her home in Paris. Tea was, of course, very expensive then, and so she would have kept it under lock and key. The clock displayed on top of the commode is one of many that Monroe owned. This particular one is called a lyre form clock because of its decoration in the shape of a small harp or lyre. James Monroe had a lifelong fascination with timepieces and barometers, collecting them from makers all over Europe. His time in France allowed him to interact with some of the most famous clockmakers in history, like Jean-Antoine Lépine, who made pocket watches for Marie Antoinette and also made a watch for Mrs. Monroe. The Monroes had several interactions with Napoleon during their second visit to France in 1803. They attended his coronation and spent time in his court. Eventually, Monroe would negotiate the Louisiana Purchase with Napoleon and his advisors. This large gilt armchair illustrates the relationship between Monroe and Napoleon. It has just returned to the museum after more than a year of conservation work to restore it to its former glory. It is believed that this set was originally made for Napoleon and was given to him as a gift by a courtier or dignitary. Chairs matching this one have been found in the former homes of Napoleon's brother Jerome and the Count Demidoff. Chairs that may also be from the same set were also used at Josephine's home, Malmaison. It is possible that the Monroes acquired this chair from Napoleon 
during their negotiations for the Louisiana Purchase. Hanging on the wall, we have two engravings that belong to the Monroes. They are scenes from Shakespeare's Merry Wives of Windsor. The Monroes actually purchased these and two others when they were living in London. The British government was not overly friendly towards American ambassadors at the time, and so James and Elizabeth Monroe were more or less social outcasts. They invited many people to attend dinners at their home but these invitations were usually refused and they were not invited to the homes of others. It was a very lonely existence after their time in France. Shortly after his arrival in London, Ambassador Monroe was sent to Madrid, Spain, in order to negotiate the purchase of Florida from the Spanish. His family stayed behind in London, believing that they would return to America as soon as Monroe's duties in Spain were complete. Because of this belief, the Monroe family never purchased a permanent residence in London and instead rented apartments. Monroe's assignment to London was extended several times, and it wasn't until 1807, three years after their arrival, that the Monroe family was finally allowed to return to Virginia. In the end, the Monroes spent seven years in Europe. While it can be said that London was not their favorite home during that time, their experiences in France would be among the happiest memories the family would have. For the rest of their lives, their time in Paris would affect how they lived and worked in the United States.